Genesis 2 verse 9, he says, Out of the ground made God to grow every tree that is pleasant for the sight and good for food, fellowship. And the tree of life within the trees are the seeds. So whatever you are, that's what you produce. So when Adam ooh, ate of the wrong tree, he got the wrong seed. Genesis 1, what God did. Genesis 2 is how he did it. So the, the first principles are laid down in these chapters that, that conducts the whole of time. He says in Genesis 1.11, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb, yielding seed, and the fruit tree, yielding fruit after its kind. Yielding fruit after its kind. This is principles laid down. And whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree of that which fruit and the tree yielding its seed. So it will be for your meat. How can seed be meat? So in the garden, there was two trees and there was seed for meat. Now, when Adam fell, he had to till the ground for bread. He wasn't going to eat seed for meat. But when Jesus came, he said, my bread is meat and my meat <laughs> is to do the will of God. So all these are spiritual patterns. Now in chapter 2 verse 9, he says, Out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree which is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now this tree of knowledge of good and evil is literally two persons and the one is Christ. And I can say that because it comes right through the Bible. Out of the stem of Jesse comes one tree and the Spirit of God is on him. Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And in Revelation, this tree of life was opened and out of the tree, um, out of the throne and out of the Lamb comes the river and on both sides was the tree of life. And he says, you can come and you can drink freely from the river and you can freely eat from the tree. So whatever you eat is what you are. In the beginning, God said, let there be, let there be, let there be. The birds beat, the bees beat, the trees beat. Then he made man in his image and his likeness. But he said to him, eat, you'll be whatever you eat. Man did not make the wrong decision. He was disobedient. Verse 16, and the Lord God commanded man saying, from every tree in the garden you may eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Adam did not have a choice. He had a command. He had a command to rule and reign. What did he have to reign over? Everything was perfect. Whoa! Darkness was there first. And God separated darkness from light. And he had to protect Eden and the garden from this darkness infiltrating. But this darkness was there first, which was a tree. And this tree was also in the garden. So God planted it in a way that man could define it and guard the tree. And the only way he could guard the tree was obedience. If we go through the history and we see how you guard your country and you guard your possessions, it's fighting. We have to protect. We have to stand up. We have to be big. But then Jesus came in and he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. <laughs> he thought it no robbery to be equal with God, but he became obedient. Everything in the natural is totally the opposite of the spiritual. In the spirit, to, to win the fight, you have to lose the battles. And this is what Jesus did on the cross. Guys, the lion became a lamb. And when Satan thought he had a victory, wow, then <laughs> the, the whole place was filled with this incorruptible seed and he cannot stop it. 
So Satan is not very clever and it's not very clever to follow his advice because he's the deceiver from the beginning. Chapter 3 clearly describes the character of Satan. Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Now, it's like, why do we even try to fight Satan? He is subtle from the beginning. And by the way, we are not even having a war with Satan anymore. Jesus conquered him on the cross. The only thing we have is darkness. Our warfare is not against principalities and powers, but our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. Why? We are still in this dark realm. So we're not even fighting Satan anymore. It is our minds that we have to conquer. And you conquer your mind by obedience. Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. This is the very pattern how people lose the promises God has given them. In this dark realm, there are so many voices coming to us. And if we listen to the wrong voice, it is always this one. Where is the promise of God? Doesn't God know about us? But His word was settled from the beginning to the end. And it's settled in the heavens. The end is always determined from the beginning. So any real prophecy that comes to you. Now, there are many prophecies that are not real because they are false prophets. But they are real prophets. Now, uh, Revelation 19 tells us what a real prophecy is. The testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So when God brings us into his purposes and we have prophecies concerning his purposes and our lives joining his purposes, it will always carry the testimony of Christ. You will not just hear, oh, you're going to get a car, you're going to get a house, you're going to get a wife. Because if you look at the car and the house and the wife, that's mostly the things that take people off course at the end. So, whoa, you know, there are defects in these prophecies, but there are real ones. He says, did God not say, you shall not eat? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, I want you to please note, Eve did not get the command. The command was given to Adam before even Eve was taken from his side. It was not her purpose. So you will see later in the chapter when she ate, she literally gave to Adam and he was standing there by her. So what did he not do? He took the blessings of God and didn't rule the garden. He tried to step in and do it himself. He became disobedient. Now, if you look further, he says, the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like gods, knowing good and evil. Well, we know, the Bible says, when they ate, their eyes did open and they saw their nakedness. What happened? They lost that spirit consciousness of God and they were just stuck with a dark spirit. And all they could see was their nakedness. They could hear his voice in the garden, but they couldn't see. So he was right. But the problem is, in the day your eyes will open, you will know good and evil. God never intended for us to grovel in evil. Do you know, Revelation says, because you have not searched the depths of Satan, I will put no burden on you. Even in banks, when they train people with money, they don't train them with the false and the good. They train them with the good and the good. When the false comes through, they know it. But we think we must train our children and we must train ourselves and we must know everything in the world so that we can have the full experience and know what is what. All we do is we sell our souls like Esau syndrome who sold his soul for lentil soup. Have you ever tasted lentil soup? Well, I'm sure there's something better you can taste or sell your soul for. 
you know, it just doesn't make sense. Why? Because you are blinded and you cannot see. So it's only in Christ that our eyes can be open again. The problem is with the knowledge of good and evil. Evil always overshadows the good in this natural realm. But when Jesus came, the spirit of truth, it is good. He said, David calls it, goodness and mercy will follow me. Everything about God is good. Everything about Satan is sad and sick and sinful. Come on. So what happened? They lost the capacity to experience and see and have fellowship with the goodness of God. But the goodness of God didn't stop because the goodness of God now worked his purposes through the ages. And in Christ lived all the fullness of the Godhead. He was the exact image and imprint of God, the fullness, the, the, the sevenfold spirit, the full measure of the Godhead dwell in Christ. And we are now complete in him because he is the tree. And of course, you have to go to Isaiah where he says, a child is born, a son is given, the government is on his shoulders. When was that? That was when the tree was cut down and his name is Father. So he brought us back into that relationship of the Father. And he goes on and says, of the increase of his kingdom, there will be no end. But this kingdom is placed right into this darkness. We weren't taken out. It's right here that we must start bearing fruit and just be. The only thing you can do do is be. You don't have to fight. Jesus did it all for us. So here in Genesis 3, the two trees were set out and what you eat is that what you can be. But in the Old Testament before the cross, people couldn't taste and see. This is why you have to taste and see that the Lord is good and you could only eat from him. After that, this tree of life was now nailed to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of life had the sevenfold spirits of God, the spirit of God, wisdom, understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Wisdom is the truth spirit of God. So what happened on the cross, this defect tree in the humanity was corrected. Why? So that we can eat again, be engrafted and bear fruit that we can give life to others.